Good. Page 155. Oh, this is much more interesting. Let's talk more. 156. 155. Page 155. Gemara. Masechet Shabbos. Perek has trimmed the Arba. Mi Shehech Shich. Okay. Starting from Rav Mahashia. Last one on the page before. Right? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Or should I start from Rabba Amar? Whichever. I'll do Rabba Amar. Rabba Amar. Manda Sabitsiladin. Whoever prohibits the sides. Asa Nami Bitsiladin. Tiladin. Who prohibits the sides of the sides as well. Manda Shari Bitsiladin. Whoever permits sides of the sides. Shari Nami Bitsiladin. Permits using the sides of the tree as well. Uh. So you can't use the sides of the sides of the tree, meaning you can't poke holes into the tree and then use it as a as a pole, as a post for your sideboards, and you can't bring the tree down either, according to uh, rubber. According to rubber. Anyway, no, not according, according, according to the name. Okay, well, it's not the end of that. No. Eitive Rabba Shashia la Rabba. So he challenged Rabba. Na'at. If one stuck ya ted be'ilan, ted value into a tree, ve'talabab kalkala, hung a basket on the stake. So he stuck a stake into the tree, and, and then you hung a basket. A four by four hand grip basket is the way... By uh, Steinsatz puts it. And what's more, he, they're saying that this basket is for your Eruv yeah. goods. Yeah. Lamala ma'ashim ma'ashrat fachim, high than ten fachim, ain't Eruv for Eruv. The Eruv is not an Eruv. Uh, because we didn't take the Eruv out of the basket on Shabbos. Ah, okay, so you can't remove it out of there on Shabbos. So it because be because it's because, yeah, above the ten hand grips, it's private property. It is prohibited for him to take the bread from the basket on Shabbat because the basket's area and height are in a private domain and he is standing in a different domain. Right. He's in the public domain. The Matimasra Tfachim, lower than 10 Tfachim, Eru Eru. It is a valid Eru. Hamadinat, Dinat Yated, Bilan. So the reason is that he drove a stake into the tree. So, in other words, it's hanging from the stake, not the tree. Ha lo na'at, but he, had he not driven the stake into the tree and, some, and simply put the basket hanging from the tree itself, a filo l'mata ma'asra, ma'asra t'fachim, in eruv, eruv, his eruv would not be a valid eruv if it hung lower than ten t'fachim, vaha, Hai tana te kasabitsaladin. And here we see that this tana prohibits the size of the tree because you can't use the uh you can't use the size of the tree. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. That's he's talk uh, according to Steinsholz, they're talking here about where the basket was tied to the tree. To the tree. The kashare whether it's hanging or tied to the tree, mm. I think it's the same issue. The kashri v'tzide t'radim, but permits, aha, permits the size of the size, meaning the stake that was whacked into the side of the tree. Contrary right. to Rafa's So, so that's going against Rafa's opinion, who says you can't use the sides, the mm-hmm. sides of the sides, for a sukkah. Amara papa. Here we're dealing with a narrow mouth basket into which you need to shove your hand in. Is your basket, by the way? Yeah, it's probably got. No, yeah, you no, it's got a narrow mouth, mouth basket. So that when he would have taken the arrow, had it hung from the tree itself. When he takes the bread for the arrow, he moves the tree because it's. Narrow. Ah. 
and you're trying to, you have to sh force your hand in uh -huh. when you move the tree. Kameni Leila Ilanis, he would have moved the tree. Right, the Kamash, the Kamashamesh, the Ilan Gufe, and he would be using that for the tree itself, which is prohibited according to all opinions. So that's why the tunnel requires that the basket not hang directly from the tree, but be suspended from a stake off the side of the tree. The Hilkata and the Halakha is Tadadi Nasrin Side Tadadi Mutarin. The sides are forbidden, but the sides of the sides are permitted. Well, he goes, it's a little bit longer here, so maybe. Do you have, no, yeah, have you I, I didn't No, that was oh, just the first Oh, good. Okay, good. So, the sides of the tree forbidden on Shabbos, and the sides of the sides are permitted. Admitted. By the way, do you have the sides of the sides? Sides of the sides, yeah. Amar Ravashi, hash de da amra da mart tadadi nasurin. Now, oh, now that you've said that the sides are forbidden... Hai Durga Darga Simadla An elevated ladder what about an elevated ladder? In the following way Lolin Khe Inish Adikla a person should not lean a ladder on the palm next to the watchtower. Oh he just says against the palm tree itself. Good. Dahavu Lehud Tadin since the latter would have the status of the sides of the tree, mm. which would be forbidden. I assume that would probably yep. be on Shabbos. Ella linche agvaze lavar medikla. Rather, he should rest the ladder on stakes coming out of the palm, uh, in which, and all of a sudden it becomes the sides of the sides. The chisalik, also as he ascends, lo lina kare. Agvarze, he should not rest his foot on the stakes, uh, which would make use of the tree itself. Ella litna akani, rather he should rest his foot, his feet on the rungs, which is again the sides of the sides yeah. of the tree. On shadows. The interesting thing to me there is, of course, that. It's highly likely, although you'll get climbing the sides of the sides, it's a palm tree, you're probably causing it to sway as well, you're probably moving the tree. Which yeah. is the objection that we had earlier with the tight mouth bus. Mm. Anyway, there's a little halacha here. Ah, uh, hang on. Maybe that's why this works better when the basket is hanging from the tree itself. Because then the branch is swaying as you're mm. as you're doing it, whereas you've got there that it's actually attached Tied, to the tree, yeah. which, like the ladder, it's kind of the trunk mm. is stable. Okay, um, and the halacha is that the use of the sides is prohibited, but use of the sides of the sides is permitted. This note says some commentaries explain that the fact that it is necessary to establish the halacha both for sides and for sides of sides, indicates that the Gemara accepts the basis of Rabbah's assertion that there is a connection between the two disputes. Even so, the Gemara concludes that the Halakha is in accordance with the third opinion, which states that the use of the sides is prohibited and use of the sides of the sides is permitted. Okay. I think we've got that. At last. Mishnah. Oh, yeah, this is a fascinating thing. Preparation of animal food on Shabbos. Matir and Pekir... I've never heard you talk like that. Matir and Pekir are mere behema. You can untie bundles, Pekin, of straw before an animal. Or mere fasfasin et hakipin. And you can scatter kipin for it. Aval lo et hazirin. But not the zirin. So you can scatter the kipin, not the zirin. Ein meraskin lo et ha shachad velo et ha charuvin lifnei behema. One may not shred either fodder or carries before an animal. 
Ben Jacob and Gata, whether it's a small animal or a large animal. Rabbi Yehuda Matir Bacharovin Lajaka, Rabbi Yehuda permits training carrots for a small animal. Mar, Amar Rabhuda, Hen, Hen, Pekin, Hen, Hen, Kikin. Pekin are identical to Kikin, they're both bundles of straw. Pekin tray, Pekin are tied twice. Kipin salata, kipin a tied three times. Zirin de az de arze. Zirin, however, is cedar bows, boughs. Is that what you've got? Uh, I've got cedar, but bundles of cedar branches. Bundles of cedar branches, so they're cedar branches. Bahati kamar, and this is what the Mishnah means to say. Matirin pikie amir lifne behema o mefasfasin. You can untie a piki in double, un, double bound or straw before an animal and one may scatter the straw afterwards. And the same applies to kipin. Oh, that's interesting. And you can do the same for triple bound. Mm. But not permitted for zirin, which is the cedar branches. Neither in regard to scattering nor in regard to to untying. Aha! Um, Amara Chista, my time is Rav Huna. What is Rav Huna's reasoning for this? Kasavala mitra the uchla tarachina. He contends that one may exert himself uh, to improve the food he has. Le shavui uchla lo mashvinan. But one may not make food, as in make a non food item into a food item on Shabbos. Okay, so that's one reason why we allow the bundles of straw and not the bundles of cedar branches. It is expanded to be the bundles of crops which are fit for animal consumption in their present state may be further prepared on for that, that is by sketching. Cedar branches cannot be eaten when bound together. Therefore, one may not exert himself, himself to untie them and render them edible on Shabbat. The straw, or whatever you like to call it, is already edible, even if you were to give it to the animal ah, with pluck mukta. Well, it's not it. Pluck but the You can touch it because it... Yeah. But the other is not edible unless you untie it. Okay. Ravi Hurama. Hen hen pekin, hen hen zirin. Ah, okay. Now we've got a new issue. Pekin are identical to zirin. They're both bundles of straw. Pick in three, pick in twice, zero in slata. Zero in is three times, whereas before we said keep in was three times. Uh, keep in to arze, keep in uh, cedar branches, the husky command, that's what the mission of me. Matir in pick here, amir, lift neighbor, hemaval, pas puse, lot. One may untie, pick in, double bound, of straw before an animal, but one may not scatter them. The keep in, pas puse, nami, mefas, mefas, the Sinan and keep in the cedar branches, according to him, one may even scatter and also untie. Avalo Hazirin Lefasfes El Aleatefas. The leniency does not apply to Zirin, which is the triple bound, in regard to scattering, rather it's only in regard to untying. Okay. Amarava my Thomas or Rabbi Yehuda. What's Rabbi Yehuda's reasoning for this? Kasava shavuye uchla mashvi meshavinan. Rabbi Yehuda maintains that one may make food, as in making the food edible for an animal on Shabbos, mitraf but uchla lo tarachina. But you can't exert yourself for enhancing animal food, which is the triple bound, I think it means. But, I mean, that same reason would apply to the double bounds. I mean, on, on that line of reasoning, the only thing that you could scatter would be the... Maybe there's no such thing as single bound. Maybe it starts with tri with double bound, like as mm. in once this way and then twist it around and once that way. Mm. What I was visualising was a long bundle with one string down here, one ah. string down there, and the, the three bundle one had it. Yeah. Okay, so whatever he says, yeah. he's saying that you don't exert yourself, that's his reason. Yeah, in that, that case I can see 
why you would scatter the seed of bells, because in order to make them accessible to the beast, they have to be scattered out. So, yeah. whereas the others, you can just push the bundle over to them. Yeah. So, you can't treat either fodder or carrots before an animal. Ben Daka or Ben Gaza, whether it's a small animal or a large animal, my love, Haruvin Dumi of the Shaka, what's the Mishnah's case? What are, aren't we speaking about carobs analogous to fodder? Ma Shachat Rakikhe, just as fodder is normally is tender. Ah, Haruvin de Rakikhe, so too carobs are tender. But, and yet the Mishnah says you, you may not shred them. Alma Lord Tarsinan Ba apparently one may not exert oneself to enhance animal food or to your said Ravuna. And this is a refutation of Ravuna. Yeah, I was mentioning this morning. We didn't go we did not even complete this section this morning with Rabbi Ko. Um but I pointed out that carrots start off as a relatively tender an animal, a goat or whatever, would be able to eat it when it's sort of still Chewy. and green on the tree. But um, they become hard as they reach maturity. Mm. Hard meaning kind of like hard leather. Sort yeah. Of strappy leather. Mm. Uh, well, even harder than that. Yeah, really hard. You know, really quite woody almost. So, you know, at one stage it might be, and the other stage it might not be edible. Right. So, I just want to recap. You can't shred either fodder or carrots, whether it's small or large, and fodder is normally tender. So, two carrots are tender. Carrots are soft, which implies that ones that are hard might be. I mean, if you're going to offer it, might need shredding. So, ah, so it's saying in both cases of the fodder and the carrots, they're they're both considered tender and therefore shouldn't require mm. shredding. Apparently, one may not exert oneself. Okay, for the, for to enhance it more. Good, I get that. Amala, do you get that? Yep. Amala, Rav Huna Lo, Rav Huna could tell you that it's not the case. That's not the way the mission is telling us. What it's saying. Shachat Dumya de Charovin. Sorry, we're speaking of fodder analogous to carobs, ma charovin de akushe, just as carobs are commonly hard, Peter. Ah, shachat de akushe, so too fodder is hard for the animal to eat and requires softening, hasty, mashkachatla. And where do you find a case where it's too hard? The uh, ile zutre regarding young donkeys where even regular fodder is too hard. Tashma, come learn. Rabbi Yehuda Mati, Bacharuvin Ladaka, Rabbi Yehuda permits, permits the carrots, shredding carrots for a small animal. Ladaka aim for a small animal, yes. Lagasa, lo. I amrat bishumaz. Now, this is fine if you maintain. Tanakama sava mitra for uchla lo tachina. Tanakama holds we may not exert ourselves to enhance food. Shavuye meshavinan. But we may make food edible. Hainutakama Rabbi Yehuda. That explains what Rabbi Yehuda says. The Tana is the Tana. Hecharu bin ladaka nami shavuye uchlahu. Carries for a small animal. Uh, also, uh, you should make the food edible. Ela i amrat. However, if you'll say we're dealing with hard carrots. Tana kama sava shavuye uchlalo. Mashvina mitzrach be'uchla tarchinan. The Tana kama holds we may not make food, uh, but we can exert ourselves for food to improve the food. Rabbi Yehuda matir becharuvin ladaka. So, what about Rabbi Yehuda who permits shredding hard carrots for a small animal? Kol shigen lagasa. This should be certainly true for a large animal. Animal, I don't see why. Mi savrat daka. Do you think when he says daka? Oh, he, he, you said you don't see why. He's added here. 
If carrots are suitable for consumption by a small animal, all the more so are they suitable for consumption by a large animal. Um, I, but isn't it referring to shredding the hard carrots? It's shredding carrots for a small animal. Shredding carrots. It doesn't say hard or soft at this point. Well, shredding but carrots. Shred for, carrots. For stuff for a small animal. Yeah, but, but you're doing it because it's edible. But why? And you're allowed it? to make it. But you're why? doing it because you're allowed to make it edible. But what's the question? The question is, how could this certainly be true for a large animal? And the answer is, why shouldn't it be true for a large animal? If it makes it edible for a, la a small animal to eat, it makes it even more edible for a large animal to eat. Yeah, but, you don't need, but you don't need to exert yourself on Shabbos. Oh, well, that's another argument. <laughs> okay. Mir Sarazaka, do you think Daka, Daka Mamash, Daka means small animal literally? My Daka? What is Daka? Gasa. Uh, a large animal. Hey, where'd they get that from? Yeah, uh, that's what I wondered. The Amai Kare La Daka, and what does he call large animal a Daka? The da, Daika Ba'ukla, because the large animal chews its food very well. Ah, in other words, he can maybe compact the food. He, he, trans, he translates it slightly different. Um, mm -hmm. Because it is particular, Daika, about its food. And then he's added, since this animal can eat uncrushed carrots, when there is no alternative, one may exert himself and crush them for it. Okay, so it likes its particular. Mm. It's dovka. Yes. Uh, maybe dovka is the uh, mm. Hebrew equivalent of daika. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a strong correlation. So, Kasha. Tashma, come learn. Mechatchin, you can cut up et had luin lifne habea my gods before an animal, the et han vela lifne a clavim or carcass before dog. My loves a luin dumian di nevela ma nevela. Derakicha af de luin derakichei. Is it not talking about gourds? Similar to a meat carcass, similar to a carcass, just as carcass is soft, so too gourds are soft. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I I feel like they're kind of making a a similar like a comparative um, issue of the gourds and the carcass. Mm to a, don a large donkey who can eat, mm. small or large. Maybe. We're not allowed to finish now. And they're also dealing with um, dogs, which uh, which brings in another category of animal you'll find a little bit further on. Cool. Ama tarachinan be'uchla das, one may exert himself to make something, to improve something that's already edible. Or to you, to the Rabbi Huda, and this is a refutation of Rabbi Huda. Who said you can't do that? Amala, Rabbi Yehuda, lo. Rabbi Yehuda would say to you, no. That's not how to understand the Mishnah. Nevela Domya did luin a carcass that's similar to God's. That's what it's talking about. Madluin de Ashune af nevela de Ashuna, just as God are tough, need to be cut up, so too the carcass is tough and also needs to be cut up. The Hechi Mashkachatla, and where do you find such a case? Bivasar Pile, with elephant meat, which is tough for any dog. Inami Beguriata Zutre, or alternatively, Even regular meat for small puppies. Yes. <clears throat> Tashma. Come and learn. Mr. Rav Yehuda. Titane Rav Hanan. Minahadea. Rav Hanan of Nahadea taught the following Baraisa. Vefarchinan Teven. Vaaspasta. Asva Aspasta. Cool. 
one may crumble straw and fodder or my and mix them together. That's so the animal consume the straw on account of the fodder. Uh huh. Um, Alma tachinem ba'uchla. Apparently, you can exert yourself to improve the food for the animal. Kevin bitivna saria the straw. We're talking about a spoiled straw. As pasta the ile zutre Sorry, and the fodder. It requires crumbling because it's fed to young donkeys. Good. All right. So when we get a donkey and a dog, we'll know it. Well, do. you'll be on shutters. Well, you'll get more of that a bit later uh, in this next Mishnah. Mishnah, ain't of seen as hagamal. You can't stuff a camel. I think that means shoving food. Overfeed. Can't. Way he put. Do not overfeed a camel. The Lord our sin. And you can't cram it, aval mal itin, but you can put food down its throat. Do you have cram it? One may place food Force into food. its mouth. False food. The the ein mamirin etar agalim. Also, one may not fatten cars, aval mal itin, but you can put food down their throats. Umer hal katin latar nagalim, but you can force feed chickens, but not in the more sun, and put water into their brain of our log goblin, but you can't knead brain and water together. But ain't not near maim lift needs where him lift near yon him shabah shubah. You can't place water before bees or before doves in a dove coat. A dove coat aval not near lift near sorry, avazin, but tanogolim, but lift near yon har de. But you can't. You can put water before geese, chickens, and Herodian children. Uh, so it's a nice little note here. Yes. There are two distinct versions of the word adesiot explained in the Talmud. One is Herod seot, meaning a uh, name for King Herod, who introduced this species of dove to Israel and raised them. The other is Rodosiot, named for the dove's place of origin, the island of Rhodes, Rhodos. In the Mediterranean Sea. Been there. Uh-huh. Hadithian doves were domesticated and the owners were responsible for their sustenance, unlike earlier species of doves whose owners would merely provide them with a dove coat and extra food. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. These were helpless doves. They're probably, they're probably, you know, like these fancy helpless. pigeons that they go with fan tails and hmm. powder pigeons that are so deformed. Did you ever see the columbariums in Israel? No. There is one at Beit Gurim. It's uh, dug out. Cave mm. underground, and it's massive. Massive. You'd love it. Gemara, my ain of sin. What's the meaning? One may not stuff. Amar Rav Yehuda, ain of sin la evos betoch me eha. You can't make a trough in its belly. I may not force a huge quantity of food. The Gemara traces the word obscene to a bus, a trough. We may not stuff a camel with so much food that we create a very cool trough in its belly. I see. So it's like extending out the stomach. So you can see it as well as hanging down. Mi ika ki hai gavna. Is it possible to do this to such an extent? A sure thing. Vichidama Rav Yirmiya mi Tifti. As Rav Yirmiya Tifti recounted, the Didi Chazi li Hahut Haya, I once for a certain Arab merchant, the Ochla Kora Baatina Kora, who fed his camel an entire core and loaded it with another core. 
So you could you could do it. Ain marmirin, one may not fatten calves, but you can put food into their throats. So this is back in the Mishnah. Ezohi hamarmeraav, ezohi halata, which are fattening and which are putting food down their throats. Amarav Yehuda hamera'a lemakom she'ena yechola lehachazir fattening, which the Mishnah forbids, uh, is putting it into an area of the throat that is so far back the animal can't bring the food back up. Halata lemakom she'echola lachazir putting food down their throats is an area where the animal animal can still bring it back up. Rachista Amar both of these are where the animal can no longer bring it up. And fattening is done with an implement. Putting food down their throats is with your hand. Mativ Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef challenges from Brisa. Mehal Ketin Latana Golim. You can force feed chickens. There ain't, which we even still do today. Well, the, you do it much more with geese. Though. With geese. For their liver. liver. What's it called? Oh, I can't remember the name. The French do it. Yeah, what's the liver called? Um, Joanna will remember. The pate, the. Um, pate de foie gras. Pate de foie gras. Okay. Mahal uh, Katin. Let's turn it on. You can force feed chickens in terry for Martian Mal Kitin. Certainly one may feed them. The Ain Mal Kitin Leone Shovach Leone Alia. However, one may not feed dove coat doves or attic doves. The Ain Terry for Martian Ain Mahal Kitin. And certainly you can't force them. My Mahal Kitin or my Mal Kitin. What does it mean, force feeding, and what is meant by feeding? Ilema, if you say, Mahal Ketin de Safe Le Biadayim, force feeding is when he, you feed the birds by forcing food down their throats with your hand. Mahal Ketin de Shade Le Kamayeho, and feeding is when you simply throw the food in front of them. Miklada Yone Shava, Yone Ilaya, sorry, Aliya, Mishta Kamayehu Nami Lo. That implies that dove coat does, and addict does, even throwing in front of them is not allowed. Ella, love, rather, they're not, we're, we're not describing correctly. Force feeding is in an area, putting food by hand in an area of the throat where it can no longer bring the food back up. And feeding is where it can, where the food can be brought back up. Miklal Zahamara obviously that implies that fashioning is an implement. And this is a refutation of Rabbi Huda. Amalah Rabbi Huda. So Rabbi Huda would actually say on that matter, the Lam Mahalkatin to Safe Lebiadaim really force it. Am I going too fast? No. Really, force feeding is by hand. Malkatin de Shade le Kamayehu, and feeding is when he throws it in front of the birds. With the car kashyalach, and as to that which was difficult for you to understand, Yone Shrova the Yone Aliyah le Mishta Kamayehu Nami Lo. Dafka does and Adi does even throwing food in front of them is not allowed. Before in the dafka or does in an attic, right? Uh, based on Hane Mezonotan Alecha. These, that is the chickens, chickens and the geese, depend on you for their food. But Hane and Mezonotan Alecha, and these, the doves, yes. don't depend on you for their food. Kiritanya, as was taught in Barasa, not Nim Benzonot Lifne Kelev. You can put food before a dog. They ain't not Nim Benzonot Lifne Chazir. You can't do it before a pig. Omaha perish benzela zem, and what's the difference between this one and that one? Zem is on alecha. This one, the dog, the dog depends on you for its food. The zem aim is on alecha, and the pig doesn't depend on you for its food. It goes out and looks for it on its own, and that's the same with doves, right? Except for the special Herodian doves. 
they oh, normally sh- are hopeless. They, they hopeless and hopeless. Yeah, the others uh, go off and look for their food themselves. That makes a lot of sense. Amar Rav Ashi, Matnitin. I hope Gemara Shabbos doesn't finish off with something logical. Amar Rav Ashi, Matniti Nami Daika. Our mission indicates this as well. You can't place water before bees or before doves in a duckcoat. One may place water before gets chicken than already does. My tummy was the reason. Love shut me shum to honey. Mizonotana lecha, the honey, a mizonotana lecha. Is it not because these, the gets chicken than the Herodian does, depend on you for their food, and those, the bees and the dove coat does, don't depend on you for their food? Vulitamech. And according to reason, Maya. Maya. For what reason? Are you only referring to water? Even wheat and barley should be put in, given to them. Should, should also not, sorry, not be. Should also not be given to them. Sorry. Ella. Rather. Shani. Maya. Dishkise. Baagma. Rather. Water is different. Since water is available in a pond. He's gone on to say, or in other creative words, and therefore one need not exert himself to provide water for bees and doves. That is not the case with the rest of their food. That's exactly what I was going to say, because that's what Rashi says. Darash Rabbi Yona, a pitcha deve nesia. Rabbi Yona expounded at the entrance to the Exilax, the, the, what's his name? The Resh Galuta. Yeah. Expanded the entrance to the Resh Galuta's palace, Mai What does it mean when it says, Yodea Tzadik Din Dalim, the righteous one knows the suffering of the poor. It sounds like, what's his name, Voldemort on the mound. Uh, the righteous one knows the suffering of the poor. Yodea Kadosh Baruch Bechelev Shemez Onotav Mu'atin. The whole and blessed is he knows that a dog suit is Miga. He therefore said a dog's food should linger in its belly for three days. Kitzitzanan, as we learned in the Mishnah. Kamatishheachilatobemeavihetame. How long may a living creature's food linger in its stomach and be considered tame? The Caleb regarding a dog. Shloshayamim et Three twenty-four hour periods. Uva ofot uva dagim. And regarding birds of fish. The time that it limit kedelit shiti pol la or sorry la or betisharef as long as it would take the food to fall into a fire and become consumed straight away. So this is how long the food linger and be considered tummy, which would mean it hasn't been broken down. Because if it gets broken down, then it becomes tahor. And that's related to the pasuk of Mishle, the righteous one knows the suffering of the poor. There's a little halacha here. Flesh of a corpse eaten by an animal does not transmit ritual impurity while still in the animal's skin. If the animal died and the flesh remained in its stomach for three full days, in the case of a dog, or for one full day, in the case of other animals, the flesh is considered to have been digested and is ritually pure, right. in accordance with the ruling of Rabbi Yehuda ben Batera in a Mishnah in Tractate Oholot. I'm a Rav Hanuna. Shmamina, learn from this. Ora ara demishta umsa lechalba. It's proper to throw meat to a stray dog. The chama and how much should you throw? Amarav mari meshach udnei vechutra abetarei. 
the sad of its E followed immediately by the rep of a stick. Yeah, and it goes, here he says, strike it immediately thereafter with a staff. So it doesn't keep following you. Yeah. Honey, Mili, Bidavra. This is so only in the desert. Uh, he says, uh, applies it specifically when one is in the field. Uh-huh. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I'm curious, Peter, can you, can you say the Hebrew for that? Hane Mile the Dabra? Yeah, okay. Hane Mile, is it Bedavra it or says, Medavra? It says Bedavra in mine. Right. But the way Mr. Steinsaltz has translated it, it, sorry, my apologies, the way Mr. Art, Rabbi Artscroll has translated it, it's as if it was the word Midbara. Uh. Desert, this is so only in the desert. I don't know whether, it, I'm sure that's just a simple relationship. So you say the field. In the field. And this is an unpopulated area. Aval Bamata law, however, in the city, don't throw it in your meat, the Atala Misra, because it will tend to take along after you. Amara Papa. And that, of course, when you're feeding it out in the country, and you could whack it with a stick immediately afterwards, it's less likely to follow you home, I would say. Oh, yeah. Right. Late, so Rapapa said, late the Anya Mikalba. There is no creature poorer than a dog. The lake that's here, Mahazira, and no creature wealthier than a pig. As pigs will eat anything, and people provide with plentiful amounts of food, whereas there's not much lying about. Oh. So I, think, I think it's interesting that, I mean, here is an animal that is considered dirty. You know, the dog is not considered to be something that you want to touch and have hanging around you, that you want to discourage it, but they still feel sufficient concern to feed it. Yeah. Which I, I think is a nice side to this, mm -hmm. even though you give it a whack immediately afterward, because you don't want this dirty, corrupt, nasty... I mean, our attitude is rather similar to a Muslim's attitude to a dog. Or a person. Well, whom you refer to as a dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Tanya Kavate the Rabbi Huda. Bryce was so in accordance with Rabbi Huda. Ezohi Hamera ah, the Ezohi Halata, which are fattening and which are putting food down their throats. Hamera ah, Marbitsepe um Ufokes et Tiha. Fattening is one brings the animal to its knees, props open its mouth, or machila karashina anu main bevatacha to fit its vetch and water. At the same time, halata machila me umad, mashka me umad, putting food down its throat, uh, is where one feeds it standing and waters it standing without forcing it. Ve not to mean kashinan bifne atman umain bifne atman, and gives it vetch separately and water separately. Okay. Mahal Katin Latana Golan Kule will make the food down the throat to chickens. You can put food down the throat to chickens. Uh, and one may put water into their brand, but one may not need the brand one together. Amar Abaye, Amri Takame Damar. I said before Master, before the Master, Matsmitin Mani, who is the Tanar of our Mishnah? Who said that? Whatever. Amalia, he said to me, he replied, Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehudahi. So Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehudahi is the Tana. The Tana is the son of Rasa, Echad Noten Et HaKemah. If one contributes uh, the flavor, Echad Noten Le Tzachor Maim, and another contributes the water, HaAcharon Chayab, the last one is liable for needing. Give her Rabbi. These are the words of Rabbi. Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehudah Omer, Eino Chayab Ad Shigabel. He's not liable for needing until he actually needs. Aha. Uh -huh. Dilma, perhaps, it's not, perhaps it's not Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda either. I can't look at Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda Hatam Elam Elakema. 
That's Rabbi Yossi Bar Yochura, uh, disputing with Rabbi, says there, and in regard to flour, needing is in regard to flour, Davar, Gibul, Hu, which is needable, Aval, Mursan, however, in regard to bread, the Lav Bar Gibul, Hu, which is not needable, I feel Rabbi Yossi Bar Yochura Mote. Even Rabbi Yossi Bar Yochura would agree, simply adding the water is an act of kneading. It cannot be kneaded into dough the way flour can. That seems to be the point with bran. And therefore, he has to agree with with um, Rebbe. With Rebbe. Um, the Gemara rejects this. Right. Lost Alka does have a question that your mind. Slap, slap. The Tanya, the Hedja, who is on the explicitly. And not in my name, more son. You can't put water into bread. Give Ray, Rebbe. Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda Omer, not in my name, more son. You can't put water into bread. Tan Rabbanan. Rabbi Tan Rabbanan. Rabbi Tan Rabbanan. Rabbi Tan Rabbanan. One may not need toasted grain flour. With water on Shabbos, one may not need toasted grain flour. With water on Shabbos, one may not need toasted grain flour. Toasted grain flour okay. The yesh are in goblin, and some say you can need it. Full stop. Okay, and he's explained a little bit about what toasted grain flour is, he, because he's translated the sages taught one may not need sweet flour made from unripe grain that was dried in an oven. Mm. Yes. Um, now, I have...